Hello viewers, today we are going to discuss impact or influence of Panchayati Raj on education in India. Let us try to find out what is Panchayati Raj. How is it having impact on India? Why is it so relevant from the point of view of education? First of all, to talk about what is importance of Panchayati Raj, let us try to understand what it was to Gandhiji. Friends, to recall Gandhiji, Indian independence must begin at the bottom. Every village should be a republic or a panchayat having full powers. The greater the power of the panchayats, the better it is for the people. For Gandhiji, Swaraj signified the vesting of ultimate authority in the peasant and the laborer. For Gandhiji, the true democracy was not possible unless it has been vested in the people of every village. That means every person in the village has been empowered. Only then the real Swaraj was possible. So, keeping in view the vision of Gandhiji, the Constitution 73rd Amendment Act 92 was done. The Constitution 73rd Amendment 1992 has provided a new dimension to the concept of Panchayati Raj. In other words, the concept of people's participation to be considered as an ideological commitment and therefore legislative and structural measures should be initiated to give legitimacy to people's participation. This was ensured through 73rd Amendment Act. Education may be formal or non-formal. Spread of literacy, cultural activities, that all those were vested in the domain of Panchayati Raj bodies. This is as per the article 243G of 11th schedule. In pursuant to the 73rd and 74th amendment, each Indian state passed their own Panchayati Raj Act. For example, uh, section 22 of Bihar Panchayati Raj Act 2006 identifies some important role of panchayats in the area of elementary education. Community participation in educational management was something which was also suggested by previous commissions to name few Kothari Commission. Kothari Commission was the first one to refer to the community participation in educational management to become important in present India. The 73rd and the 74th amendment were the way to get into that. They were historic attempts to empower local self-governments by giving them constitutional status and identifying 29 areas including elementary education over which they can legitimately have jurisdiction. 73rd and 74th amendment recommended for the delegation of authority related to education which included primary and secondary schools along with technical training and vocational education and of course not to forget adult education. If we go back to 1993 Virappan committee recommendation there also decentralization of educational planning was referred to. It was through involvement of Panchayati Raj institutions as per the Virappan committee. We will be able to have the improvement in educational status or the educational record. It was DPEP which was initiated. DPEP means the District Education Primary Program. This was initiated for decentralization and community participation. Apart from that, Serve Siksha Abhiyan SSA, which is a very elaborative nationwide program formulated by Government of India to universalize elementary education. This was also initiated to lay emphasis on community 
ownership of the school system efforts have been made since then to decentralize planning and management of education to the local level so as to make delivery of educational programs more effective provisions of basic infrastructure is a precondition for the success of rural development program regarding the accessibility adequacy of different infrastructural facilities such as drinking water sanitation street light education health quality of road transport etc all these provisions for the democratic decentralizations were given to the local political bodies local political bodies that is pri panchayati raj institutions they were also made more accountable to local citizens and they were entitled they were made, made accountable to cater to the local needs panchayati raj institution is a three tier system of administration at the grassroots level for the development of rural areas first is gram panchayat at the panchayat level where chairman of panchayat mukhya is the head then we have panchayat samiti at the block level where chairman of panchayat samiti pramukh is the head then we have zilla parishad at the district level where chairman of jila parishad is the head so the panchayati raj institutions are statutorily elected bodies at the village block and district level with powers of local government the primary objective of panchayati raj is to strengthen the base of democracy at the grassroots level and to enable the people of each village to understand as well as own the basic systems which are working for their benefits and for which they should be also making their local level governance accountable and responsible the system of decentralization is basically based on the following principles what are the principles first there should be a three tiered structure of local self governing bodies from village to district level with an organic link from the lower to the higher ones there should be a genuine transfer of power and responsibilities to these bodies then the third most important principle is adequate financial resources should be transferred to these bodies to enable to them to discharge their responsibilities the fourth principle is that all development program at these level should be channeled through these bodies which bodies panchayati raj bodies and the system evolved should be such as to facilitate further decentralization of power and responsibilities in the future friends these were the principles of decentralization what are the functions of panchayat basically the first function which we should be understanding is that the panchayat has to provide essential services and facilities to the rural population panchayat is also to supply improved seeds to the farmer and inform them of new farming technique panchayat has to set up and run schools and libraries in rural education system panchayat has to start primary health centers and hospitals in villages and start vaccination drives against epidemics panchayat also needs to execute plans for the development of scheduled castes and tribes run ashrams shalas for adivasi children and set up free hostel for them panchayat is also supposed to encourage entrepreneurs to start small scale industries and implement rural employment scheme panchayat is also required to construct bridges roads and other public facilities and their maintenance as well as provide the employment to the people panchayat is also to work on sanitation related issues so keeping in view these major functions let us also touch upon the list of functions which have been prepared by our government to be carried out by prs 
agriculture development and irrigation facilities as we referred in the first points land reform eradication of poverty dairy farming poultry piggery and fish rearing rural housing safe drinking water social forestry and fuel primary education adult education and informal training roads and buildings markets and fairs child and women development and last but not least welfare of weaker sections that is scs and sts so looking at this above functions some special provisions were made in the act and it is amply clear that the new pri system has been empowered the um, has been empowered to take steps for all round development of the villages so for that a structures were created as we have already discussed what were the three tier system which was created first was gram panchayat at the village level then panchayat samiti at the block level and zilla parishad at district level in some states friends we will also come across two tier structure which is gram panchayat at village level and panchayat samiti at block level even few states have only one that is single tier structure at the village level why these systems have been created in different states to decentralized the administrative system why is decentralization so important and why have we discussed all the functions of the panchayati raj we have discussed all the functions of panchayati raj because when it comes to education friends education is not something which can be studied or understood in isolation we have to understand what are the various functions to which panchayati raj is catering to only then we will be able to understand how they can cater to education along with the other functions in the village or at the zilla level all the functions are interlinked if we talk about poverty if we talk about the scst problem if we talk about the women issues if we talk about entrepreneurs if we talk about education system vocationalization of education all these are interlinked and they cannot be understood until and unless we understand importance of them holistically friends let us take an example of rajasthan in the rajasthan the panchayati raj model is of three level that is gram panchayat village level panchayat samitis and zilla parishad the chairman of the gram panchayat is known as sarpanch of panchayat samiti pradhan and of zilla parishad zilla pramukh their nomenclature com, uh, composition and tenure vary from state to state all as the name itself says gram panchayat is sarpanch panchayat samitis is the pradhan then zilla parishad is headed by zilla pramukh the nomenclature itself state that what kind of authority each one of them is going to have let us also try to discuss elaborate elaboratively what are the basic structure of pris as also to understand how those functions of the pris are done gram panchayat is a base or a bottom tier of pr system it is the first executive tier having jurisdiction over a village or a group of villages the members of panchayat gram panchayat the panchas or the sarpanch chairman are directly elected at and in certain states they are also called pradhans in certain states they are called sarpanch so the sarpanch or mukhiya of the village is helped by other people also usually the sarpanch is helped by five other people so it may vary from 5 to 31 according to population of the concerned village so 
प्रधान हेल्प्ड बाय फाइव टू थर्टी वन पीपल ऑफ द पॉपुलेशन ऑफ द कंसर्न विलेज एज टू डील विद द प्रॉब्लम एंड टू फाइंड आउट सोल्यूशन बाय टेकिंग हेल्प ऑफ द लोकल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन इज द वर्क ऑफ विच इज द बॉटम टायर सिस्टम दैट इज ग्राम पंचायत इन एडिशन टू द इलेक्टेड सरपंच देयर इज ऑल्सो प्रोविजन फॉर ऑप्शन ऑफ टू लेडीज एंड वन एस सी एंड एस टी मेंबर इच इफ दे हैव नॉट बीन इलेक्टेड एज पंच सो दिस इज द कम्पोजिशन ऑफ ग्राम पंचायत वट आर द फंक्शन ऑफ ग्राम पंचायत टू मेंटेन लॉ एंड ऑर्डर दे आर रेस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर मेंटेनिंग पीस एंड हरिमनी इन द पंचायत सर्कल they are also responsible for civic construction construction of wells ponds water reservoirs distribution tanks construction of public streets public toilets and maintenance of roads etc these are the basic responsibility of gram panchayat thirdly they are responsible for welfare works welfare works include famine and flood relief work welfare programs for women children handicapped and uh, weaker sections the main functions of the gram panchayat are if we talk from the point of view of administration is collection of funds maintenance of records budgets and accounts along with registration of birth and deaths etc another important function of gram panchayat is from the commercial point of view is the supervision of community orchards grazing grounds etc they are also responsible for the development of the village when when we talk about the developmental functions of gram panchayat they are preparation and execution of plans for the promotion of agriculture irrigation cooperatives cottages small scale industries and main source of income of panchayat are the grants from government taxes on buildings vehicles etc and that is given to the gram panchayat of course we also need to include in it the pilgrim tax and as well as tax on the goods and the animals what are the functions of panchayat samiti as we talked about that this is the middle tier of the pri system in the case of panchayat samiti this is uh, coterminated as with the tehsil or the taluka this is composed of sarpanchas ex officio members of all gram panchayats within a block along with the mla of the area without right of vote in addition in addition to these ex officio members there are also some co-opted members two women one sc and st representative each if they have not already been elected as primary members chairperson of the panchayat samiti is called pradhan he is elected by members of the panchayat samiti amongst themselves at certain places such as rajasthan panchas of gram panchayat also take part in the election of pradhans so friends panchayat samiti's composition is clear to us now let us try to understand what are the main functions of panchayat samiti they are also quite similar to the gram panchayat functions but they are different from the panorama point of view like if we talk about first function which is agriculture they are responsible the panchayat samiti is responsible for formulation of plans of development of agriculture tree plantation and soil conservation animal husbandry health and sanitation education running primary schools maintaining communication that is constructing and maintaining inter panchayat roads promotion of cooperative societies then development of cottage and small scale industries and of course miscellaneous works so what is the main source of income of panchayat samitis main source of income of panchayat samiti is annual grant by state government which is shared from land revenue as well as taxes from fees loans contributions etc friends now let us talk about zila parishad what is zila parishad 
Zilla Parishad is an apex body of PR system located at the district level. It is also known as District Development Council in some states, such as Tamil Nadu. It is composed of a chairperson, president of Panchayat Samiti. Then it also have MP, MLAs and MLCs of the areas. And who are the members, uh, not elected members, just as in the case of a Gram Panchayat or in the case of a Panchayat Samiti we talked about. Here also uh, the members representing women, SCs and STs are co-opted if they are not otherwise members. Representative of cooperative societies are also part and parcel of Zila Parishad. And the people who have the experience in the field of administration, public life or rural development are also considered to may become part of Zila Parishad. Just as in the case of the both the bodies which we have discussed, the function of Zila Parishad is also same. Zila Parishad membership ranges from 40 to 60 people. Who is the who is the head of Zila Parishad? He is the elected person and it is called Zila Parmukh. What kind of functions just Zila Parmukh or the Zila Parishad is to do? The specific works are like education, planning and finance. Friends, in today's discussion, we have discussed the basic functions of the three-tier system which exists due to Panchayati Raj in India. We talked about the functions as well as the jurisdiction of Gram Panchayat, Zila Parishad and Samiti. So, in the light of the functions, we are going to take up their role in enhancing school education or elementary education or the vocationalization of education in villages. So, friends, for today, this is all. Thank you.